In this lesson, we're going to learn about arpeggios. We're going to cover what they are and how to play them. An arpeggio is a collection of notes of a given chord, but played in succession, so one note after the other, instead of being played together at the same time. You can think of an arpeggio as a broken chord. A chord is a combination of notes played at the same time. And believe it or not, we can play chords on the bass. Now, when we pluck the individual notes or break up the chord, we are playing an arpeggio. So here's a chord, and we break up those notes, we're playing an arpeggio. So this is a major chord, major arpeggio, minor chord, and a minor arpeggio. Let's start off with a major arpeggio and learn the shape on the fretboard. So once memorized, this shape can be played anywhere on the neck of the bass, allowing us to play a major arpeggio in any key. Let's learn the shape starting on the fifth fret of the E string. So starting on the note A, this is going to give us an A major arpeggio. So the fifth fret of the E string, I have the note A, and I'm using my second finger. Then the fourth fret of the A string, I'm going to use my first finger. And at the seventh fret of the A string, I'm going to use my fourth finger here. And that is an A major arpeggio. We can also add the root note at the top. So this is going to be the octave shape. So this is going to give us another A at the top of this shape. So I'm using my fourth finger here at the seventh fret of the D string. Now let's try playing that exact same shape starting on D. So it's going to be at the fifth fret of the A string. So we have fifth fret of the A string. I'm using my second finger. Fourth fret of the D string using my first finger, and the seventh fret of the D string. I'm going to use my fourth finger for that. So now you have a D major arpeggio. And again, you could add the octave at the top. Let's take a look at the major arpeggio shape from another angle, starting with the A major arpeggio. So starting at the fifth fret of the E string, I'm using my second finger, fourth fret of the A string with my first finger, and seventh fret of the A string with my fourth finger. Again, I could add the octave at the top, so the seventh fret of the D string. Now the D major arpeggio, same idea. Fifth fret of the A string, fourth fret of the D string, seventh fret of the D string. And again, we could add the octave at the top. So for the rhythm hand, when we're moving in an ascending direction, we're going to use an alternating index and middle finger pattern. So when we're descending, you can try using the rake technique if you feel comfortable. So let's take a closer look at the rhythm hand. I'll play through that A major arpeggio. So ascending, using an alternating index and middle finger pattern. So when we descend, we could use a rake technique. You can also move this shape up and down the neck to arpeggiate other chords as well. Now we'll try out a different shape that makes up the minor arpeggio. We're going to start off at the 5th fret of the E string, so we're going to be playing through an A minor arpeggio. So starting at the 5th fret, using our 1st finger, then at the 8th fret, using our 4th finger, and then moving over to the A string at the 7th fret. We could use either our 2nd or 3rd fingers, whichever you feel comfortable with. So there is our A minor arpeggio. And again, we could add the octave at the top, 7th fret of the D string, to complete that A minor arpeggio. Let's go ahead and try playing that exact same thing starting at the 5th fret of the A string. So now we're going to be playing the D note, and that's going to be our D minor arpeggio. Same idea, so 1st finger at the 5th fret, 4th finger at the 8th fret, 2nd or 3rd finger at the 7th fret of the D string. That's our D minor arpeggio, and we could also add the octave at the top. Let's take a look at that from a different angle. So starting with the A minor arpeggio. Fifth fret of the E string, first finger, then fourth finger at the eighth fret, second or third finger at the seventh fret of the A string, and again, the octave at the top. That completes our A minor arpeggio. Let's do the same thing for the D. So fifth fret at the A string, first finger, fourth finger at the eighth fret, second or third finger at the seventh fret of the D string, and again, the octave. Now let's play the D minor arpeggio, starting at the 5th fret of the A string. So 1st finger, then 4th finger at the 8th fret, 2nd or 3rd finger at the 7th fret of the D string, 
And again, we could add the octave at the top. And that's our D minor arpeggio. So for the rhythm hand, we're gonna be using the same techniques. So in an ascending direction, you can use an alternating index and middle finger pattern. And in a descending direction, you can incorporate the rake technique. Now, if you notice, the minor arpeggio shape has two notes on the lower string. And the major arpeggio has two notes on the higher string. And that's one way to go ahead and remember these two shapes. Playing arpeggios is fundamental to bass and can be easily recognized in songs like Stir It Up by Bob Marley, I Saw Her Standing There by The Beatles, and Crazy Little Thing Called Love by Queen. The more often you play them, the more easily you'll be able to identify their use in all sorts of songs. Arpeggios are an important step in understanding chords and harmony. Plus, they're a great workout for your fingers. So keep practicing, and we'll see you next time.